After years of hearing games journalists praise this retro roguelite, let's see if it lives up to the hype. I'm the Flannel Fox Tim Swernick, and I reviewed Rogue Legacy on the Nintendo Switch. Originally released in 2013 from developer Cellar Door Games, this roguelite platformer feels familiar right from the start, but a bit limiting. At first, you can only jump and use your sword, having a particularly satisfying bounce slash that only works if timed just right. But when beginning, the tables are turned against you and you really feel it. Death after death, you keep running into the castle, which is procedurally generated each run, meaning that each time that you explore it, the layout will be different than before. As the title of the game suggests, you are in fact leaving a legacy, as each new life you start as a descendant of the character you've previously played. With each new life, you can choose one of three descendants to play as, each with varying size, class, personal trait, and magic ability. For example, you can get a colorblind mage, and while you can defeat enemies by casting fireballs that circle around you, it's pretty hard to navigate through a level safely. Some will have glaucoma, making the entire level blurry. Others have vertigo, forcing you to play through the level upside down and with the UI mirrored. In the beginning, these characters just feel like torture to play, but if you embrace the challenge, it can be intriguing to test your skills. Speaking of torture, Rogue Legacy is hard. Like NES platformer, take a break and come back hard, especially in the beginning. The way that you progress in Rogue Legacy is using the coins that you collect in each round to purchase upgrades to your estate, which raise things like your attack stats, health, unlocking new characters, and much more. You can also spend that money to unlock weapons, armor, and runes if you found their blueprint in the game. Even then, Rogue Legacy will still give you a reality check if you aren't giving it your all. But after you get deep into your unlocks, you'll be able to level the playing field just a bit. For each piece of armor or weapon that you wield, you can equip a rune. Runes can vary from giving you an extra jump, which can be stacked so you can have a triple or quadruple jump if you want, a dash ability, or earning more coins throughout the level. Currently, I'm utilizing a double jump, a dash, two extra coin modifiers, vampirism perks, and almost a complete set of vampirism armor, which gives me health with every enemy slain. Overall, the game runs great on the Nintendo Switch, except for one crazy glitch that occurred when I was in the middle of a great run, which really sucked. But the glitch was fun to experiment with. Rogue Legacy is an addictive rogue light platformer with a rewarding progression system once you get into the meat of the video game. The quick runs lend it to a great portable experience that I can wholeheartedly recommend if you're a fan of difficult retro platformers. That's why I'm giving Rogue Legacy on the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video game review, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Flannel Fox. Follow me on Metacritic and Twitter at The Flannel Fox and on Instagram at The Flannel Fox Gamer. Be sure to follow and subscribe because the more followers and subscribers I get, the more codes I get, which means I make more videos. I'd like to thank Cellador Games for providing me with this review copy. Thanks for watching my videos, and as always, see you next time, Switchers.